postpartum stress and choose to approach it. Hey guys, it's Shama here and stress is a normal part of running a company, but what's even more important about acknowledging and recognizing stress is to really start to talk about how we manage it and what to do with it. So today I want to talk a little bit about some tools and techniques that could be useful for you um, coming straight from what I use and how I've been applying these techniques into my life to reframe it. You know, I truly believe that these days we hear so much about work-life balance. As an entrepreneur, there really is no such a thing, right? You can't have a balance when everything is everything, right? There is no delineation between downtime and work time because really ultimately it's a pleasure to have a business. And while it can be stressful and there's so much going on, it is really a gift. And so those of you guys out there who are running your businesses, it's very important that you start to reframe your psychology around what it means to be a business owner. So let's unpack and dive in into a few key areas that I like to discuss today. Number one, I'd like for us to start to question stress. What does stress really mean to us? Next, I want to talk a little bit about procrastination and what that means and different ways in which you can start to think about it. Next, we'll go into reframing stress and how you can actually develop tools and techniques to relate differently to the different stressful experiences in your life. And lastly, we're going to do away with all expectations. We are going to make it so that it is your game. You are creating a business that works on your terms, but it's not just a business based on your lifestyle, it's aggressive. It takes a lot of hard work, but we're gonna reframe other people's expectations and really focus into how you can become the most optimal and efficient person in running your business without carrying the weight of stress. In fact, guys, stress can be super debilitating. It keeps some CEOs from being able to show up in the morning. It keeps them from jumping and leaping forward to take the next most strategic steps in their business. So how you choose to handle this is going to be super valuable and really important. All right, let's take a look. So one of the things I like to do when something stresses me out or I feel that like, what am I doing? I like to ask myself, is there an easy way out of this? Meaning, can I take a road that is going to be the one of least resistance, that's gonna be the easiest, and where I'm still gonna get great results? Sometimes I think that when I get emails or I get posed with problems and it can really spiral out into something uncontrollable, I have to pause and say, how can I make this easy for myself? Do I really need to be the one to do it? Can someone else do it? What exactly is going on here? And I start to separate myself from that thing that made me go, and cause me stress in the first place. Now, in conjunction with that, you also wanna ask yourself, is this stress that I'm imposing on myself? Or is this something that's coming from someone else? Chances are, most of the time, it is stress coming from you. Now, here's the reason why. When I started running the company, I remember saying to myself, everything is on my back. I need to make sure everyone gets paid. I need to make sure we're doing all this marketing. I need to get out there. I need to be speaking. Everything rested on me. So I certainly then would take so much stress on knowing that I had to be the workhorse in order to drive everything. And that can be a really comfortable place. In fact, guys, the hell you know is sometimes better than the one you don't know. And if you're used to doing all the work and taking everything on, it can be difficult to know what it feels like to not be doing all those things. But that's exactly what I want you to start to think about. What is the stress that you are taking on yourself that you can actually minimize, that you can schedule, that you can parcel out in a way that still allows you and myself to be effective while still getting it done? Now, of course, if it's stress coming from someone else or someone else has issues, remember, it's all a projection, right? It's everyone else's BS that comes to you. And that is something that I have to remember on a daily basis. I've chosen to put myself in a very high sensitive and high touch space where I'm constantly dealing with people's emotions and feelings around money, around hiring, around strategy, around really the live and die moment of their businesses. And because I've chosen to put myself there, I have to be willing to weather the storm of everyone's emotions, all of their freakouts, and all of their successes. And trust me, if I went along with the ride with all of my different clients, I would not be rock solid, I would not be objective, and I wouldn't be able to be the strength that they need. So what does that take? That takes me reminding myself, hey, this is their stress. 
right? This is not my stress, right? So those are some things that are very important to keep in mind. Now next, we've got to reinterpret procrastination. Why is that important? Well guys, sometimes it might just be the way you work. For me, I know there are certain projects that I need to give myself a ton of time on to do. And then there are other projects that I can actually bop out overnight. So for me, I've had to learn to understand that, hey, just because I don't do things the way other people think I should do things, doesn't mean that I'm not optimizing and doing it in the best way for me. It doesn't mean that my output isn't strong. It doesn't mean that I can't produce great work. And actually, if I understand what projects I can hold off on or what projects I need more time with, I can better manage my time, which means that I will feel less stressed because I have more confidence in my approach. So guys, I would just take procrastination out of your vocabulary. To be honest, you know how you work the best. Whatever that is, that's what it is. Don't worry about how other people choose to define it and interpret it. Now, along with reframing procrastination, it's also important that you do away with expectations. Right, and this means expectations on how other people think you should be performing, expectations on what it is you think in terms of any type of, you know, I need to be performing like this person or I need to be like that person. You need to start to understand that expectations from other people are simply just opportunities for limitations mentally, right? You need to be judging and looking at yourself from the perspective of what you truly want. You need to be making decisions and managing your stress in ways that allow you to reach your highest peak performance, regardless of how other people choose to express their own ways of performing. Now, one of the things that I find to be really frustrating sometimes, and boy, can I be a victim of this, is reading a whole lot of books on how to do things, right? How do I you know, spend more time doing X? Or how do I shortcut this thing? Or how do I you know, manage my time better? Or, Boy, I'm sure all of you guys, you know, read the four hour work week. I was like, this is amazing. However, as you know, entrepreneur, if you're running a fashion company, there ain't no such thing as a four hour work week. It just doesn't exist. So stop trying to do things the easy way. Know that it's difficult and then try things on for size and see how it applies. You're never going to find just one book that has all the answers. There's never going to be one guru or one mentor that's going to be able to teach you everything. You're going to pick and choose things that work with you. Try them on for a size. See how it mentally feels to accept the way you work, to do things the way you need to, and to manage your time in the best way you can for yourself. All right, guys, I hope you found that to be really useful. Just a little bit of the things that help me and things that I do on a regular basis in order to stay on top of stress. It's very easy at the end of the day to feel overwhelmed, underpaid as an entrepreneur, and to ultimately ask yourself, what am I doing this for? But you love it, it's a passion. This is your moment. So if you can take the stress out of it, you can enjoy it and be so much more productive in your day to day. All right guys, as you start to build your business and your corporate culture, make sure you check out our blog post on building company culture. Super valuable, really important that you start to distill all of these different things into things that you can enact within your company and your small corporation. Personally guys, internally at the Scaling Retail family, we believe that nothing should be stressful so that when things that are stressful come up, we can actually jump to it, right? It allows us to have a more relaxed and light and mental framework on the day to day, knowing that because we haven't been taxing ourselves daily, when things do come to rise, boom, we can hop to it. So think about what are the mental frameworks and ways in which you can start to instill company culture. And then lastly, make sure you check out our download on the Scaling Retail CEO Toolkit. These are favorite tools of mine that I've amassed over the years and techniques and mindset strategies that can really help you optimize your performance. Now again, guys, remember, like I said, there's not one resource that's a one size fits all approach. So I imagine you'll take hopefully a few of these things after you tried them on for size and take it forward and hopefully repay it forward to some other CEO that needs this advice just as much as you do and just as much as I did once upon a time ago. All right, leave comments below, head on over to Instagram. Please send us an email at hello at scalingretail.com. We would love to hear from you. Have a great day. Bye.